Hello friends, how's it going? It's me, Betty Jean. Today, we are gonna do a tag video. I love tag videos. They are one of my favorite videos to do. I love just the prompts that some creators come out with. I've never done my own tag, I've always wanted to, but I just don't feel like I come up with good enough questions to like warrant a tag, you know what I mean? So in the meantime, I will just enjoy other people's tags and participate in them. And this one is a lot of fun. This is the content creator confessions tag. I initially saw this video idea first from Angelica, but the original creators of this video are Kate the Great Beauty and Better Off Red. I will have all three creators videos down below. Please go check them out. They were all wonderful to watch and I was really excited to do this myself. I've actually had this saved to do for quite a while and I'm just now getting around to it. There are 17 questions basically pertaining to what it's like to be a content creator. The good, the bad, the ugly, all that good stuff. And I'm really excited to dive into these questions. Before we do though, I did of course film this look. I film every look you see on camera. This look should already be up on my channel by the time this video goes up. It is with the Two Moods palette from Give Me Glow. It is a two looks video. And let me just give you my accessory details. These plugs are from Love Kills Boutique and I do not know where this choker is from. So anyways, yeah, let's just hop in and do this tag. Question number one, how do you feel about the term influencer and do you feel you are one? I feel like the word influencer used to like bug me more than it does now. I feel like the term influencer has just gotten so ingrained in our society and social media at this point. Influencers just are, they are a thing. Do I think I am one? No, that's literally not the first thing I would say if somebody asked like what I do, like for my social media half of my life, I would say creator or YouTuber or anything like that. I don't think I would go for influencer first. That's not the tag I put on myself. I'm a creator first and foremost, and that's just kind of where I stand on that. Influencer is a weird thing. I feel like when I think of influencer, my mind just initially goes to like the huge like creators on the platforms, you know what I mean? Like the millions of followers, that kind of vibe, that is not me, not even close. So I, I, I don't put myself in the influencer box, you know, that's, that's kind of where I stand. Question number two, how did you decide to become a content creator? I've gone over this before. I've actually done like YouTube behind the scenes kind of question and answer videos before, but I'll just kind of dive into it again lightly. I basically went to cosmetology school. I wanted to do hair and then in cosmetology school, they really stress that you have to learn how to do your makeup, which I do not really agree with now. I don't think you have to wear makeup to do hair. I just think you need to look clean and presentable. You don't necessarily have to have a full face of makeup on, but I did start learning because of that. And I actually found I really enjoyed it. And I started getting into colorful makeup pretty much right off the bat. And I just started practicing and learning and I started getting better and better. And then I had a lot of friends in my life, Zane included, really encouraging me to start posting my looks online and then eventually to start creating videos. So that's just kind of how it happened, you know? I did just Instagram for the longest time. I was terrified to ever do YouTube. I was so nervous and I was like, maybe Instagram will just take off. And then it's really hard to grow in this industry at all. It's a very saturated market, not to say you can't, but it is hard. Um, so eventually I just kind of got bored with just Instagram and I was like, you know what? I'll give YouTube a try too. So. That's where I am now. I think I posted my first video just about five years ago, actually. I think it was April of 2017. So, been a little while now. Question number three, what's your experience knowing other creators in life, good or bad? I do not really know any in real life. I, I'm really bad at making friends. <laughs> I'm very much a lone wolf. I feel like I have a lot of acquaintances. I feel like I have a few very solid personal best friends and stuff like that, but I'm very much a solitary human. I like to just hang out with myself and my husband and my cats. <laughs> but I have met Nerdy Girl Makeup. She used to post on YouTube now. I think she only does Instagram now. She is so sweet. She was so kind. I met her and her family. We went to dinner at Disney Springs and it was so fun. So that was a very pleasant, positive experience. I've had multiple like, fairly deep conversations with a decent amount of creators. I've had just friendly chats with people. I love Annette's Makeup Corner. I really love Spooky Lips and Fat Hips. Smoky Glow is really sweet. I had a few conversations with her. Abby Williamson is wonderful. I feel like I'm blanking on everybody I've ever had a conversation with, my goodness. Angelica, I mentioned her earlier, she is super nice. 
Um, yeah, I don't have like a lot of really close friendships just because I am such a loner and I have major imposter syndrome where I've convinced myself that I'm not worthy of really being anyone's friend <laughs> on the internet and in personal life. It's a really big problem, but the things that I have done and the conversations I have had have all been very pleasant. I haven't really had anything negative with another creator. I think everybody has been super sweet. Everyone's really supportive. I think the small beauty community is a very fun place and I absolutely adore everyone that I've ever really been in contact with. Question number four, do you accept sponsorships and how do you feel about them? Roll the sponsorship. No, I'm just kidding. This video is not sponsored. <laughs> uh, I do accept sponsorships. I started taking sponsorships I think 2020 is when I started taking my first ones, if I'm not mistaken, which was so cool. I couldn't believe that started happening. And I think they're fine. I think it's wonderful. I think it is great for creators to get paid for their work. It's such a great way to keep creators afloat, especially ones that don't have another job. I do have another job. This is not my full-time gig, but it does definitely help a lot. I feel like as long as you, number one, first and foremost, disclose that it's a sponsored video, post, whatever, then absolutely cool. And as long as it's something you align with, a product you already use, a product you're excited about, a brand that you are familiar with, something of that nature, as long as it just kind of fits and you disclose it, I think it's a thousand percent okay. I fully encourage it. Question number five, have you had an experience with a brand that left a bad taste in your mouth? Yeah, yeah, I feel like everyone can probably say that that's had any contact with brands. Some brands are just very sleazy. A lot of brands want you to do unpaid work. Some brands want you to do undisclosed sponsorships. I've had sponsorships actually where the brands were just very difficult to work with and I feel like I'm actually very easy to work with with sponsorships. I get my work done early, I'm very thorough, I'm pretty prompt and I try really hard. So it's, I feel like weird when the brand is like difficult and odd. So I've had stuff like that, nothing tragic, but just kind of like annoyances. I've had brands sometimes message me like wanting me to just buy their stuff. And it's like, why are you in my DMs begging me to buy your stuff? If you want me to try your stuff so bad, you can send it to me. Otherwise, if something sticks out to me, I'll buy it, but I'm not gonna buy it just because you asked me to. That's very uncomfortable. So just things like that. I can't think of like one specific instance where I like had to completely write something off, like a whole brand off because of how negative it was, but just like weird things like that, you know? The things that I feel like most creators complain about. Question number six, how do you deal with negative comments? Um, thankfully I do not get an abundance of them and I'm very thankful for that, but I will say I feel like it comes in waves. It's like I will have such a long time where everything is just calm and it's just my community of people that I love and I'm used to and I recognize your faces and your names and it's just such a fun time. And then there'll be a wave of just like random negativity, nitpicky stuff, just straight up being mean, being nasty, things like that. It doesn't happen often, but it does come in waves. And when those waves happen, one of two things occurs. Either I'm in such a great headspace and I can totally laugh it off and just block them or hide them and move on with my life. Or sometimes it catches me in like the worst time ever. I've already had like a horrible day or I'm not feeling great about myself or something like that. And that just sends me over the edge and then I'm just miserable for the next day or two. So usually I just try to block and move on. Don't have time for that. Like my channel is basically my home. Like you're not welcome in my home with that attitude. So I try to just block and move on. It gets easier with time as sad as that is. It sucks that we have to like get used to it, but it is what it is. Unfortunately, it comes with the territory. So I've just learned to just kind of block and move on. There's no time to argue with people. There's no time to defend yourself. That never works. If you're a small creator watching this, do not feel the need to defend yourself on negative comments. Don't even respond to them. They're not worth your time. You can't convince them otherwise. I promise you that. So just move on. <laughs> Question number seven, what is your biggest pet peeve when it comes to comments? Okay. I've actually thought about doing like a pet peeves video for the longest time about just YouTube in general. <laughs> Comments, makeup, YouTube itself, anything like that. I just never got around to it because I feel like that's just so petty. But I'll give a couple pet peeves when it comes to comments. Uh, the pronunciation police, especially when someone has already corrected me 500 times, like please do not add your 
501st comment about the matter. <laughs> like I totally understand if I butcher a word, you can let me know, but please do not continue to pile it on. I do not need to see a zillion comments about the same word that I mispronounced. It's to the point where like, if I'm not confident in a word, even if I look up the pronunciation and I'm just not confident enough saying it, I just won't say it because it just drives me nuts. I try my best, especially when it comes to like, a language that I don't speak. Sometimes it's really hard to get the inflections that you're not used to like using. And I just don't like being harassed about it. So there's that one. Also, if I've explicitly said something in a video and then somebody asks me, that can be kind of annoying. I know that we don't always hear everything. I multitask when I watch videos all the time, so I get it. But you know, it's still a little annoying. Or I feel like one of my number one is if I have everything that I could possibly have answered for you listed in like a description box or a caption or whatever, and someone asks and it's literally written down for you, all you had to do was read. That gets annoying too, just because it takes a really long time to fill out captions and like description boxes. But again, those are all very petty. It's not that big of a deal if you've ever done any of those things to me, I swear I do not hold anything against you. Uh, but those are just my petty pet peeves, you know? Question number eight. What is your favorite part about being a content creator? I love having the sense of community and connection with people that I've never met. Again, like I said before, I'm a lone wolf. I really don't socialize a lot. So it feels comforting to like have this community of people I can chat with and I can interact with you. I love being able to be creative and post it and people actually like it. And it's so cool. Literally, I never in a million years would have thought that I would be where I am now. Like I'm almost at 30,000 subscribers and that is insane. You literally could not have convinced me that would be the reality. And it is just the coolest thing. It is so surreal. I love being able to connect with brands. The fact that I have a collab with Shroud is just amazing. And there are so many really cool things about being a content creator, but I think first and foremost is the community aspect. I just absolutely love it and I think it is so much fun. I love being able to share my looks and my life with you. I love the vlog community specifically. I've been loving doing my vlogs and I just love that even though they're not the most like viewed things on my channel, I love just the community that's involved with the vlogs and that's what keeps me going with those because it's so fun. I love interacting with you and I just, that's so cool. Question number nine, on the flip side, what is your least favorite part about being a content creator? It can be very, very mentally draining, especially if like, maybe I just get an influx of not necessarily hate comments, but just nitpicky comments. It can just get very like, okay, what was the point of even doing that video? I should have just not done it. Maybe I should post way less. Maybe I'm not worth it. I also sometimes feel like in the content creator realm, it does make my imposter syndrome worse because <laughs> there is just a level of kind of I don't wanna say comparing yourself to others cause I'm not doing that in like a dwelling kind of way, but it does happen, you know? And then I just feel like I'm not worthy. And I feel like those are the two, the two biggest things, you know? It just kind of really takes a toll on your mental health sometimes. But when that happens, I just tell myself, you know what? I'm just gonna like take a step back. Maybe I'm not gonna try to post extra. I'm just gonna rein it in a little bit, take some days for myself that kind of thing. I feel like this is also the kind of job you can't really clock out of. The best thing you can do in that, that situation if you're a small creator dealing with these feelings is turn your notifications off. I do not let my notifications blow up my phone. I've had them turned off for a very long time. I can only see them if I actually physically open the app, which is so nice because I'm not immediately thinking about it every single time my phone lights up. And also just simply not looking at your phone if you're feeling drained. Just don't go on it. Set it to the side, do something else to occupy your mind. Question number 10, do you edit your own content? And if so, do you enjoy it? I do, I feel like, I don't know if I would ever let somebody else edit my own content because I don't know, it's like a control thing. I like being able to do it myself and have that sense of I'm doing it on my own schedule, I'm getting it done early, I don't know. I, I'm an early worker, like I like to plan things ahead. I like to pre-film and have things ready to go. Like this video, for instance, will probably be at least two weeks pre-filmed because I just had time to film an extra chatty video today and I knew I wanted to do this at some point. So it's just gonna be in the queue for later. <laughs> I, I do enjoy it. Sometimes it's like, gosh, I have these three videos that I need to edit this week and I just don't wanna do it. And it would be really nice to just have somebody else do it. But for the most part, I don't mind it. It's not my favorite part of this job, but 
I don't dislike it. I think it's fine. It's not like I'm making major motion pictures, so the editing isn't that extreme, so it's fine. I just sometimes get sick of listening to my own voice and editing out myself saying the same word 500 times because I can't get it out of my mouth correctly, <laughs> anything like that. Question number 11, where do you draw the line in regard to sharing on social media? I am very firm on the fact that I try to keep my career and hobby separate, and I do still consider this my hobby, even though I do get paid in some capacity. It's not something I could live off of, but I do get paid in some capacity. I like to keep my, my salon life separate. I do have a salon Instagram where I post my work there, but I do not vlog doing people's hair. I don't do hair tutorials. I don't do anything like that. I really like to keep that separate, and I'm pretty firm on that. I'm just not really interested in doing like how to cut your bangs videos or how to color your hair, especially because I really don't advocate for doing your own hair at home. If you wanna mess with your own bangs, that's fine. But when it comes to coloring, I very much advise seeking a professional, especially when it comes to lightening your hair, because that can go real wrong real fast. I feel like that's the biggest thing that I'm pretty firm on keeping separate. I keep my family pretty separate too. I don't really like show a whole lot of my friends and family and stuff like that because I like to keep them private, but I do show them from time to time. So they're not totally off limits. Mostly my job, I feel like. Mostly my career. I like to keep that separate. Question number 12, name one thing you wish you knew when you were starting out. Ooh, that's a good one. It's like on one hand, I kind of wish I would, would have known like what this could have grown to, but at the same time, I'm glad I didn't because for like the first two and a half years, I was busting videos out like five to seven a week without getting paid. I was working all the time in a corporate salon where I couldn't even make my own schedule. I was filming morning and night. I was hustling. I was working way too hard in my opinion, but it obviously paid off. Um, so I'm kind of glad I didn't know because I don't know if I would have, I don't know, maybe I would have worked harder if I would have known. That's impossible to say. I feel like maybe I just wish I would have known how to take breaks from social media more because again, I was hustling. I was doing this all the time. I was spending so much money on makeup, not to the point where I would go into debt or anything. I wasn't playing with credit cards or anything, but I was buying a lot of makeup and I do wish maybe I would have slowed down on that aspect a little bit. Again, it didn't put me in financial trouble, but just wasn't necessary to necessarily buy all of that makeup, but it did also bring me joy at the time. I don't know, I feel like maybe I mostly just wish that I would have known that it's okay to take breaks sometimes. You don't have to hustle every single day. 365 days a year, you can take a break every so often and it's okay. You don't have to post every single day and that is okay. I wish I would have known that once I first started getting my first hate comments that it's okay to just block and move on. You don't have to defend yourself things of that nature, anything to preserve earlier Betty Jean's mental health. <laughs> Question number 13, are there any changes you'd like to make to your content in the future? Ooh, hmm, that's a good question. I don't know if there's anything specifically I wanna change. I just wanna constantly be evolving. Like even now, my content four or five years ago is not the same that it is now. That was very much like, the time period YouTube videos. And I feel like I've just gotten better over the years at opening up more and being myself more and being just kind of silly and goofy and just not take things super seriously. I love that I started introducing the vlogs. It's not that I want the vlogs to get more popular, but I do enjoy mixing lifestyle-y content in. So I don't know, I just kind of hope I can just continue to be myself and evolve more and grow with you and just not say stagnant. That's kind of what I would like. Question number 14, what company or collab is your dream? <sighs> I feel like I literally already had my dream with Shroud. Like we made my dream palette and I still love it so much. That will mark my words forever be my favorite palette in my whole collection. I just can't believe that it happened. It just blows my mind how many people wanted one and still want one and it's just, uh, what a dream. I feel like my dream already happened, but some other brands that I would love to collab with in some capacity. Uh, Odin's Eye is one of my favorite brands. I love Kaleidos. Nomad is wonderful. I love Melt Cosmetics, but they don't even know I exist. I think they've reposted me on their Instagram one time, but I have never spoken to them. 
if there was one brand I could start getting PR from, that would be my first pick. I feel like I'm blanking on every brand I've ever loved, but those are the first things to come to mind. I love them. Game Beauty is wonderful. Menagerie is wonderful. I love Give Me Glow and Unearthly Cosmetics. I love Lunar Beauty. It's like any brand that I love. <laughs> I mean, I'm not necessarily trying to collab with everybody, don't get me wrong, but <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to answer because I feel like I already had my dream, you know? And who knows, maybe that dream will happen again. Question number 15, what other creator do you admire slash want to work with? That's a good question. I feel like literally everybody that I mentioned earlier, I would love to work with in, in like an in-person capacity. How cool would that be? Um, let me think of somebody that I follow and I enjoy, but we've never spoken to each other. I know, Make Me Up Missa, I love her work. And I think she's just so funny and goofy and she loves colorful makeup. She would be a fun one to even just have a chat with. <laughs> even if we didn't like work together in any capacity, she would just be fun to have a chat with. Number 16, what kind of content do you hate? Hate is a very strong word. Ooh, I don't like true crime. I've mentioned that before. I have to really be in the mood for it. It just makes me anxious and kind of uncomfortable. And I kind of feel like the obsession with true crime is a little bit weird. Like it's okay to be interested, but some people are obsessed with it to the point where it's just maybe a little concerning. Maybe not, maybe that's just me. It just makes me feel anxious and uncomfortable. So that's not my favorite. I don't know if I'd go as far as to say I hate it, but it's just not my favorite. I don't know if I really have a better answer. I feel like lately I just really listen to a lot of podcasts. I watch and listen to a lot of chatty videos, things that I can put on in the background and pretend it's a podcast even though it's a video. I love watching people's vlogs. Those are kind of the things that I'm super enjoying right now, but I can't really think of things that I hate, if that makes sense. And finally, question number 17, have you ever had to deal with cancel culture? And if so, how? You know, I feel like my corner of the internet has just been very quiet and calm and I love that. I mean, I feel like every creator has had like random Reddit posts made about them, but beyond that, there really hasn't been anything. I feel like my corner's pretty chill and I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> so yeah, that was my video participating in the content creator confessions tag. I had a lot of fun doing this. Again, please check out the three creators that I tagged below that did their videos. I would love to hear from you guys. Obviously, if you're just a regular person, you can't really answer these questions, but if you have a channel, I tag you, anyone is welcome to do it. And if you made it to the end of this video, why don't you leave me a beverage emoji? Because of the tea. <laughs> This was not a very tea-filled video, but it was still fun to chat about. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps my channel out a lot. If you're not already, you can follow me on my other socials. You can join the Baddie Bean fam. I am Baddie Bean on everything, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And if you want, you can subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. I'm posting most days over here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, bye.